Well guys, I think this is gonna be the most exciting experiment we've ever done on this channel. Okay, so just a quick explanation for anyone that is new to my channel. Basically, every few months or so, I like to do a new experiment. It's not really an experiment, it's more like a comparison. So, so far we've done CO2 versus no CO2. We have done uh, lean dosing versus estimated index dosing. We've done tap water versus RO water. And we've also already done one substrate experiment where we tested aquasol against dirt. Today we're gonna to do another substrate experiment, but we're taking things to another level. We're actually gonna be testing six different substrates at the same time. Okay, so these are the two tanks that we always use for our experiments. And the way we usually go about this is we set them both up in the exact same way. So same light, same filter, same equipment, everything. But then one element is different. So it's either the CO2 or it's the substrate or the water quality or fertilizer, whatever, you know. So this time we're testing six different substrates, but we only have two tanks. So how are we going to do this? I'm actually planning to make three compartments in each tank. So I'm planning to cut up some glass and to make small separations in both tanks. But I've never cut glass before and I've never used silicone glue before. So this is going to be another challenge. So both these tanks are roughly the same size. So I think they're 36 centimeters from left to right. Yeah, they are 24 centimeters tall and they are 22 centimeters wide. So each compartment is gonna be 12 centimeters by 22 centimeters by 24 centimeters. So that's like roughly six liters or so. so it's very small, but I think for this experiment, that's big enough. So here's a piece of glass that I had left over, and this piece is 58 centimeters. Kind of sucks because I need pieces that are 21 centimeters long. So from this piece, I can only cut two, two dividers. Oh, that's fine, it's just leftover glass. Okay, first time cutting glass. Wish me luck, <laughs> I'm really nervous. Let's do this. I think I should probably put on some glasses. I only have sunglasses, but. Better than nothing, right? Oh, well, that was actually not too bad. It's quite a, quite a clean cut. Quite easy, actually. Okay, let's do uh, three more. Here we go, that was actually surprisingly easy. So we got four pieces, two for each tank. And they, yeah, they actually did a pretty good job. They slide perfectly in here, just like so. And then I'm gonna glue them, glue them in place with some silicone glue. Okay, we're making progress. So I marked where the dividers need to go. So this is exactly 12 centimeters from the edge. So probably the one in the center might be a little bit smaller, but it's not really a big deal. Then put tape all around the edges. So hopefully once I apply the silicone and then I remove the tape, it should be left with a clean line of silicone. Fingers crossed, I've never done this before. And I did the same thing on this side. And now I'm uh, putting the glass where it needs to be, securing it with some tape, and then we can apply the silicone. Should be easy enough, right? Time to test my gluing skills. I'm uh, getting nervous again. And I also just realized that I should have put tape on the dividers as well, on the edges, so we can make a nice cl clean line with silicone. It is what it is. It's not gonna be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be sort of useful for this experiment. We just need to make sure that the different types of substrate cannot start mixing with each other, you know? That's it. So I'm gonna start gluing and I'll see you guys after I'm done. Whew, that was <laughs> pretty intense, uh, especially because it's such a small space. Maneuvering the, the, the glue gun is like impossible. <laughs> Definitely did, did not make it easy for myself there. 
spill a little bit there in the edges, but I can clean it up once it's dry. Let's move on to the next one. I am actually quite proud of myself. This one went a lot better already, much more smooth. No spilling this time. Yep. Okay, I'm happy that's done. I'm happy that's out of the way. Now we just need to let it cure for 24 hours. And then we can start working on all different substrates. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. The next day. Let's do this. So the plan for this experiment is very straightforward. We have six different substrates and I want to see which substrate give us the best plant growth. So we're going to fill in each substrate in each compartment. After that, we're going to plant it, fill up with water, and then just see what happens. I'm not going to add CO2. I'm not going to add a filter. I'll probably do some regular water changes, but that's it. It's just going to be substrate plants and water, and then we'll just see what happens. So it's been 24 hours, so the glue is cured. Everything is firmly in place. So we're all ready to get started. So the first substrate going in is the Aquario Neo soil. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know that this one is my all-time favorite. I use it in pretty much all my setups and I'm getting really, really good results with this. Now, I do want equal amounts of substrate in each compartment. So I'm actually going to weigh it out. So that is one kilo of Aquario Neo soil. Might be a bit too much. I'm not sure. Let's just pour it in, see how thick of a layer we're going to get. So that is one kilo. I think that's perfect actually. Give us a nice, some nice depth for planting it. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Okay, substrate number two is going to be fluor stratum. Very excited about this one. Never used it before, but this one seems to be very popular amongst my uh, American viewers. So I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, I bought a small bag, yeah, because we don't really need much. So this is two kilos. Uh, it says here, mineral rich, promotes strong plant growth, promotes neutral to mildly acidic pH. Good for plants or shrimp. And I was actually reading the instructions on the back and it says here to uh, gently rinse the Aquasol first. I've used quite a lot of Aquasol brands already, but I've never rinsed Aquasol before. I'm not gonna do that this time either. If the water gets a little bit cloudy, it's fine. We can just do another water change. Small difference in color between the two, but I think that's because the Aquaria soil bag was already open for a little while. And this one is a fresh bag. Okay, so two types of aqua soil. Now we're going to move on to something different. Number three is going to be Rio Wetland Ionian. I have the bag right here. So this is quite a new product from Rio. So I'm very curious to test this out. I've already used it once in the big shallow. It's basically behind all the, uh, the hardscape where all the immersed plants are growing in. But now we're going to test it properly. Um, there's not really much information on the bag. So I just pulled up the website. So there's a whole list of advantages, but I was quite interested in what they said over here. It's a bioactive porous volcanic substrate with long-term nutrient content for plants. 100% natural, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, iron, calcium, blah, 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 blah. So this should contain a lot of nutrients. So yeah, let's just see how it does against aqua soil. Yeah, so it's basically just crushed lava rock. Now they have multiple versions of this as well. This is the red. They also have brown and black and also in two different sizes. So this is the fine, but they also have a coarser version. But yeah, that is the first tank done. Let's move on to the second tank. Okay, next up we have pond soil plus gravel. So the first tank was kind of all ready-made store-bought stuff. Now we're going to do some funky DIY stuff. So pond soil and gravel, that's a combination I've used already once or twice before on the channel. So I still have the same bag with the water lily soil. And then I just bought some very cheap gravel. And I actually had some pretty good results with this stuff as well. I mean, it's meant to grow lily, uh, lilies in your pond. So yes, this stuff contains a lot of nutrients as well. So let's give it a try again. And then we'll see how it, how it does comparing to the other substrates. Of course, I can't use a kilo of this. That's probably going to take up the entire compartment. So let's just kind of... Measure out, I don't know, maybe 500 grams. Let's try this. I got 300 grams right here. It's quite a lot already. We can pour it in, maybe push it down a little bit, and then we're going to cover it with the gravel. Okay, it's number four done. It's quite a thick layer, but 
yeah, we're going to have to do that because the pond soil will contain a lot of nutrients. And if we don't cap it properly, all the nutrients will start to leak out into the water column and it will cause a lot of algae. So now we can move on to number five. And number five is going to be root caps and gravel. So we're going for gravel again. But this time I'm going to mix in a bunch of these root caps. I'm actually going to open them up and pour them directly on the glass. Cover that with gravel. I'm not sure how many I should use though. Let's see what the uh, what it says here. So it says one for every 10 centimeters. So that would mean that for this gram or this compartment, I would need like two and a half. Now that's not a whole lot. So I think I'm going to be a little bit naughty and add a little bit more. So I think, I think I'm going to do four. I'm going to cover it with a nice thick layer of gravel. So I think four should be fine. Okay, so we got one compartment left. This one is going to be interesting. It's either going to go very, very well, and we're going to get some amazing plant growth, or it's all going to turn sideways, and we're going to get a ton of algae. The last one is going to be pond soil again, and I'm going to cap it with aquasol powder. So I don't think this combination has ever been done by anybody else, so let's just see what happens. Right, so that is 300 grams of the pond soil in, kind of pressed it down a little bit. Now we're going to cap that with the powder soil from Tropica. I'm not sure how much I should use. I'm thinking like four to 500 grams, something like that. Here we go, all six substrates in. Everything nice and labeled, looking good. So we can now start planting. Um, all the plants came from the previous layer from these two tanks. Kind of tried to save as much as possible. And I've also have portioned everything. So we have six portions of every plant, basically. Yeah, I just want to make sure that all, all compartments get the same amount of plants. I'm first going to spray all the substrates down, just get it nice and moist. Get all the plants in. And that's it. Okay, so let's quickly go over the plants. We have some S. repens, we have Miriophila matagorosensa, Rotala bonsai, then we have a mix of Liliopsis brasiliensis and Marsalea granata. We have Rotala valici, Ludwigia super red, and Ludwigia arcuata. I think that's all that's going to go in these tanks. Maybe I'll add some more later, we'll see. It is now the next day, everything is looking good, the water is mostly clear. The only tank that is a little bit cloudy is the Rio wetland, number three. And the fluval stratum is really crystal clear. There's a little tint to the Aquario Neosol tank. And everything in here is looking pretty good as well. So I've already done a quick water change this morning, just a quick 50% water change. And I'm just using regular tap water, and if anyone, if anyone wants to know, my tap water has a KH of 7 and a GH of 9, so it's relatively hard. Yeah, I think that's it guys. Now we just need to uh, wait a few weeks. I'm very curious what's going to happen. We're just going to keep it like this. No filter, no CO2, no liquid fertilizer. So it really is just the substrate and the plants. I've also set the light schedule to 8 hours, so from 1pm to 9pm, just like all my other tanks. And I've set the intensity to 70%. As always, I will be documenting everything as much as possible. And then I'll do an update in a few weeks from now. In the meantime, guys, let me know in the comments which substrate you, do you think is going to win. Uh, me personally, I think I'm kind of ruling for number six. I think it's a great combination, but we'll see what happens. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button. And I'll see you next time. Take care.